The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm Tammy Grimes. How many stars are up there? More than you can ever hope to see, even on the clearest night. More than you could ever hope to count. And each star is a sun, just like our own. Maybe bigger, maybe smaller. And around each sun, there revolves a group of planets, just as there does around ours. And isn't it possible, even probable, that on some of those planets there could be life? How do we know that that life isn't trying to reach out to us? How do we know it hasn't arrived here already? The ship. The ship is coming down. Where? I don't see it. Let us all join hands. Join hands. And I will sing down the ship. Where? What ship? Welcome and joy to you. May the harmony of your planet blend with the melody of ours. Who are you talking to? The people on the ship. What people? You mean... You don't see them? You don't hear them? Oh, listen. One of us is crazy, and I'm sure it isn't me. Our mystery drama, Universe Hollow, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Patricia Elliott. I'll be back shortly with Act One. one word could somehow capture the very essence of our times, that word would be media. For those whose success depends on the public perception of who and what they are, the media is the lifeblood of their existence. Yes, the media makes and the media breaks. Even those who make up the media are ruled by it. The reporters, journalists, commentators, columnists, they too become media stars, and they too can become its victims. Yes, those who live by the pen may also die by the pen. Taxi! I'll take them bags, ma'am. I'll hold on to these two. Yeah, right now, just a big one. There. Now, all comfortable, ma'am? Oh, just fine. Good. Now, well, where to? Uh, do you know where Universe Hollow is? Well, I, I most certainly do. It's where all them crazies hang out. <laughs> Why do you say that? Well, they claim they see flying saucers and UFO and such, you know. Hmm, does that make them crazy? Well, I've been living around here all my life, 63 years, come July the 4th, same birthday as my Uncle Samuel, and I never did see one. All them green and yellow little fellers that's supposed to pop right out of them spaceships or whatever. And right now, I know who you are. Who am I? Uh, well, you are one of them well-known reporters. Your name's uh, Shelly. No, 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 Sheila. Yeah, Sheila, Sheila Rogan. Well, how did you guess? <laughs> I worked it out. Same as if I was a detective on one of them shows. Really? Well, how did you go about it? Well, now, first... You got that expensive-looking camera, right? Right. Now, now, second, that thing looks like one of the tape recorders, right? If I had a cigar to give out, you'd get it. <laughs> well, I wouldn't smoke it. Sixty-three years old and never inhaled a whiff of tobacco or drunk a drop of whiskey. And how about women? Been married six times. Oh, yeah, oh now, now, let me see. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, yeah. Third. Now, third, you're headed for Universe Hall. To do a story on them, right? Oh, you haven't missed one yet. And fourth, you do have a familiar face. Ah, uh, I noticed you didn't say it was a pretty face. Well, now, no, I didn't, but it's... Uh, no, it don't, don't. Uh, it won't get better. Well, I would say it's a definite face. You mean strong? Well, no, no, it's the kind of face that you know it's there. Oh, thank you. And I also seen you on them uh, TV panel shows. Oh, you're still batting a thousand. And you won that Pulitzer Prize, right? Wrong. 
Wouldn't it now? Hold the phone. I seen it in the papers. They did give you the prize. Yes, and then they took it away from me. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember. Oh, that's tough. Prize for investigative journalism to Sheila Roger for the Larkspur Chronicles. Yep, that's what it said. And it wasn't long before the Larkspur Chronicles became the legends of Lewis Larkspur. Uh, uh, can I ask you a personal question? Oh, <laughs> well, can I stop you? Uh, well, now, 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 how come you were taken in by that dude, huh? You know, somebody like you has been all over the world, knows the ropes and things. And, well, I guess he had a lot of folks bamboozled, even the president. <laughs> Can I ask you another personal question? Oh, please. Go ahead. We're old friends by now. Oh, well, now. If I was to wreck this cab and cripple, well, maybe kill a couple of passengers, nobody would ever give me another job again, right? Now, how come you're still working? Well, Tex, I'll tell you. Hey, well, my name ain't Tex. Well, isn't every Westerner called Tex? Hey, well, yeah, only if they come from Texas. Oh, well, where are we now? Colorado. Colorado. Mm -hmm. mm, you sure sound like Texas. Tex, I've got a problem. I need a drink, and I just found out that this is a dry county. You really need a drink? Bad. Hmm, well, that's just exactly when you shouldn't have one. But if there ain't no help for it, I, <clears throat> I got me a little flask here. Tex, I'm going to let my hair down. I drink because nobody loves me. How the good Lord loves you. Oh, game set and match to text the demon driver from the great state of Colorado. Now, now, here, here. Now, you might try a bit. Huh? Well, <laughs> thank you, Tex. You are one of the great humanitarians of our modern civilization. <laughs> mm. Oh, not bad. Oh, not bad at all. Uh, where did you buy this, Tex? Well, I make it myself. That's how I make certain everything, and it's pure. Well, here's to purity. <laughs> oh, Tex. Tex, Tex, what am I doing here? Hmm? Me. I talk to presidents, kings, dictators. I write about movers and shakers, wheelers and dealers. And now I have to go out and cultivate some weirdo who heads a bunch of nuts, and they're all one step away from the loony bin. Well, now, now, we shouldn't none of us be bitter, ma'am. I said to Robbie... Huh? Uh, Robbie, he's my publisher, Robbie. Oh. Robert Adrian Smith, the great press lord. Oh, surely you've heard of him. Well, I can't say I have. Well, it just goes to show you. Robbie, I said, Robbie, you've got to give me a chance to come back. And he said, Sheila... You're under a cloud. You've got no credibility. And I said, let me do a piece where credibility doesn't matter. And he said, what would that be? And I said, I'll write a thing on flying saucers. And he said, ha -ha, sold. And here I am. <sighs> How much further is it to Universe Hollow? About eight, ten miles. You know what I'd like to do for mm. just for just a little while, Tex? Hmm. I'd just like to sit back and cry. Do you mind? Well, no, not at all. You've been working up to it since the minute you got in here. Now, now, come on, now. you let me turn on the radio. Huh? There, now, you just sit back now and have yourself a good cry. No, I bet, better take a little nap. Sheila? Sheila? Lewis? Is that you, Lewis? Yes. It can't be. And why not? Because you're dead. Oh, you say that every time. What do you want? I don't want anything. I'm dead. When you die, it all dies with you. The burning ambition, the frantic desire. It all dies. What do you want, Sheila? Why do you keep calling for me? I have to ask you, Lewis. Why did you destroy me? Did I? I spent 20 years creating a reputation. I didn't think about you, Sheila. You didn't. Men like me, or like I was, we never think of anyone else. Nothing must ever get in our way. Those things you said to me, those personal things, Lewis. Oh, I don't even remember them. How could you forget? I would have said anything to achieve my goal. 
And if another person, people, even an entire nation gets destroyed in the process, well, that's been the history of the world, hasn't it? How could you do it, Lewis? Sheila, my dear, your whole working life has been spent observing the rich and the great. Why does what I say surprise you? But why me, Lewis? Why me? Miss Rogan? Miss Rogan? Why me? Why? Miss Rogan? Uh, 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 where are you? Where, where's who? Lewis. Lewis? He was just sitting here and talking to... Oh. You were fast asleep. Oh. Uh, why, why have we stopped? Well, we're here. Where? Universe Hollow. But... But... But it's just a, a, a few shacks and, and, and some tents. Uh, yes, ma'am. And this particular one is the best of the lot. Now, they directed me to bring you here. Who did? Well, some fellow who appeared to be the chief nut. And now, although I guess we better not use that word around here, you know, now it's possible they might think that we're nuts. Now, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring the bags inside. Well... Where is everybody? Well, near as I could make out, they're in that big circular tent having a meeting or a seance or, or whatever they want to call it. And now let's get you all squared away. Mm. Well, this ain't one of your luxury motels, but I guess it's clean enough. Well, but where's the telephone? Huh? Mm, don't seem to be one. No TV either. Is that... A kerosene lamp? I it must be. I don't see no electric wires strung nowhere. But but how can I plug in my typewriter and my tape recorder? Well, well, uh, what? Well, I see. I had this old maid school teacher, and I remember she said, before folks had forks, they used their fingers. Now you're just gonna have to write longhand. Oh, well, if I still remember how. Well, here you yeah. are, and. Well, thank you very much for everything. Well, thank you very much, Miss Rogan. Now, now, you let me know if I can do anything for you again. I will. Uh, what is your name? Well, now, you might just as well call me Tex. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night, Tex. Lewis. Lewis. Why, why did you destroy me? Why? Sheila. Oh, Sheila, if you play to win, you must also be prepared to lose. And to pay the price. I paid. I did what I had to. I gambled. I lost. I settled the debt with one shot from a thirty-two caliber revolver. Why did you destroy me? Oh, stop whimpering. If your life has become unbearable, end it. No. No. Uh, uh, oh, Oh. Hello. Uh, uh, who are you? My name is Serene. And you are Sheila Rogan. I uh, didn't hear you come in. I know. Uh, how long have you been standing there? Who really knows? By the way we measure time here, say, a half hour. <laughs> Uh, I'll, uh, let that go for now. I, I, I was asleep. You were talking to someone. I, I, I was dreaming. Were you? Of course I was. You're positive. Well, he's not here, is he? He is living in another state. No, 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 no. He's not living in any state whatsoever. He is dead. All you're saying is that he is no longer in this world. Yes, and since this is the only world there is... Oh, I... I'm afraid that isn't true. What? Are, are you saying there's another world? Oh, yes. An infinite number of other worlds. Mm, you're sure of that? Yes. I come from one of them. You do? Uh, uh, from where? From a point in space. <gasps> oh, you mean like Mars, Venus. Oh, no. From deep and distant space. Yes. Well, yes, good. Good. And uh, your name is uh, Serene. Yes. Ah, and on this distant world of yours, you all speak English? English? Y yes, the English 
language? We don't have a language as you know it. Oh. oh well, then, uh, what, what, what are we speaking now? We are not speaking. We are having a direct exchange of thoughts. Okay, Serene. I see where you're coming from. Now, what's the purpose of this, uh, or shall we call it, group? The Bard will explain it. The Bard? Uh, he's your leader. He's our singer. We don't have leaders. Oh, I believe he is here now. Right on cue. <laughs> Did you rehearse it? Are you prepared to receive him? Oh, that's what I'm here for. Uh, won't you come in? Good evening. I am the Bard. <gasps> oh. I beg your pardon? Here I go again. <laughs> On that somewhat cryptic remark, we shall lower the curtain on Act One. Just what does it mean? Here I go again. Why did she suddenly say that? Would you like a hint? Think of a great popular tune. We're going to be singing something like it in Act Two. Figuratively speaking, of course. Despite statements to the contrary by certain eminent novelists, the rich, the great, the famous, are very much like you and me. At heart, they are just as insecure, just as afraid of death, just as eager for love. And so they commit as many follies as we do. When they succeed, their joy is so much greater because they have risen so much higher. But when they fall, their pain is so much deeper because they have fallen so much lower. Ask Sheila Rogan. She knows. You are Miss Sheila Rogan. How do you do? I am the bard. Which means what? I am the singer for the people. Which people? All who come here to Universe Hollow. Oh. Uh, you actually sing for them? No, no. You might say I speak for them. But the thoughts are so beautiful... We call it singing. Okay. You and I are actually speaking, or is it all in the mind? No, no, we are speaking. English? English. Like you, I am from this planet. Oh, you're not part of Serene's group. We're all part of the same group. And which group is this? It consists of all human beings who wish to arrive at... Fulfillment. Well, you can't beat fulfillment. You've had a very long and fatiguing journey. May I suggest a night's rest? Tomorrow will be quite exciting. We will have a landing. Hmm, does that mean what I think it means? More people are arriving from Serene's planet. Oh, uh, why are they coming? Well, to share their happiness. Share their happiness. Okay. May you have the most pleasant night's sleep. Come, Serene. Uh, yes. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Yes, indeed. I can write this thing up in a day and get out of here fast before I get to be as nutty as they are. I write this in a rude hut that is lacking in everything we consider a convenience, even a necessity. I write in longhand because there is no electricity for my typewriter. And even if I could type, I wouldn't. Somehow the noise would be too much of an intrusion. These people seem to radiate a kind of simplicity, a sort of statement of the essentials of the human condition without a single unnecessary frill. Or is it a pose carefully staged for my benefit? I don't know. And you'll never know either, as long as you... Louis? Oh, Sheila, Sheila. What do you want? I shouldn't care to see you make the mistake again. What mistake? The one you made with me. What mistake? You fell in love with me. That isn't true. Oh, it isn't? No. 
Then why did you go against all your instincts and write the story? It was a great story. But it destroyed you. You keep asking why I chose you to write it. You know why. You were vulnerable. That's a lie. I could see it. The best lady journalist in America. I am not the best lady journalist. I am the best journalist. Well, pardon my unconscious male chauvinism. Yes, you were the best. But after everyone went home, what and who were you at three o'clock in the morning? Please. Please let me alone. But you didn't let me alone. I didn't do anything. You gave me the signals you could be had. It's true, isn't it? No. Perhaps you still have to lie to yourself. After all, you're still alive. But I'm dead. I can afford to tell the truth. I wanted power. The Larkspur Chronicles. The true story of those men who guide our destiny. I thought I could destroy them. With my help. Of course. With the aid of your reputation for fearless honesty. With the help of your crisp, dynamic prose. With your help. With your help, they could be swept away. I would be left. You seduced me. Only because you wanted me. You never cared about me. If you want a man who cares about you, don't choose one who wants to rule the world. But why did you have me write those lies? Because I thought they would be believed. It's the chance all great men take. We all tell lies. We must. The public could never tolerate the truth. It's just that some of us are found out sooner than others. You are making the same mistake. I don't know what you're talking about. The very moment the bard, or whatever he is, walked into your room, what did you say? You distinctly said, here I go again. I... Yes? Sheila, you're in love again. I, I, I'm not even thinking of and love. the story you write will be the story he wants you to write. He isn't going to tell me to write anything. Oh, yes, he will. He won't say a word, but you'll try to please him. No. Yes, just as you tried to please me. No, no, I won't. No, this story is my passport back to civilization. It has to be funny, filled with insights. It has to show these people as a group of charming nuts. It has to pose the subtle question, what is their angle? When will money, the root of all evil, sprout into a poisonous plant? And I know how to write it. Good. Just answer one small question. Why did you say, here I go again? I... I don't know. I... I suppose it could happen. He is attractive, but... It won't happen. I won't let it happen. I won't. I won't let it happen. I won't. No. Miss no. No. Miss uh, no. What? Miss Rogan. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, come in. Good morning. Well, what's this? Have, have you been up all night? I, yes, I, I sat down to write my story. I, I must have fallen asleep. Will you join us for breakfast? Uh, no, no, thank you. I never eat any. Then perhaps you'll be hungry later. First, I must go to the mountaintop and sing them down. Oh, what does that mean? The craft is approaching. It must be guided in. I must talk to them. Where? Uh, well, where are they? Now? Oh, millions of miles out in space. And you're going to talk to them? It's known as singing. Well, well, whatever you want to call it. Uh, how could they possibly hear you millions of miles away? If I had said that we have a transmitter that could beam a signal through space, would you believe me? Yes. Why? Well, because... because... A transmitter is merely a device for sending out waves of energy. We have those same powers, haven't we? Well, maybe you do. <laughs> I don't. Oh, we all do. Shall we go to the mountaintop together and sing to them? So? So what's happening? 
You don't hear what's happening? Uh, well, what am I supposed to hear? The hustle and bustle of activity aboard the ship. The excitement, the preparations for landing. These are Serene's people. You mean you actually believe her when she says she's from outer space? Well, why shouldn't I believe her? Okay. Tell me. Where are you from? Here. Right here? Yes. This place that's called Universe Hollow? Yes. You mean you were born here? I was reborn here. I see. Each of us has the power to be born many times. Oh, of course. I'm... Each of us can change and become a new person. Oh. And what did you do before you were reborn? I wasted my time. I wasted the vital forces of my life. And what are you doing now? Now? I and the others are seeking the truth of the universe. Uh, have you any idea of what that truth may be? It will be revealed at the proper time. By whom? Each of us will hear it. You are on course. Uh, who are you talking to now? I'm singing to the ship. Oh, oh, excuse me. We will hold the ceremony. Joy to you as well. I assume you were still singing to the ship? Oh, yes, yes. And now, there's nothing to be done until the docking ceremony. Won't you join me for breakfast? Why is this place called Universe Hollow? Where we are is sort of a valley, a, a hollow between two great mountain peaks. It's a meeting place for all the free spirits of the universe. The ships are always coming in. Do you know something? When I listen to you... I don't need a drink. Miss Rogan, what are you going to write about us? <laughs> Why? Are you worried about your image? No, I'm worried about you. Why should you worry about me? Because you're sorely troubled. Mm, where did you get that idea? You've had a rather bitter experience. Oh, you can say that again. Your only thought is to reestablish yourself to your former preeminent position. And what is wrong with that? You wish to use us as the instruments of your rehabilitation. Go on. You'll ridicule us. You'll use all of your considerable wit to make us a laughingstock. But you will do us no harm at all. Well, then what's the complaint? You will destroy yourself all over again. Bard, I'll tell you this. The kind of article I can do on you folks could win me a Pulitzer. And this one will stick. Then, once again, I'm back there pitching in the big leagues. And dying there slowly, painfully. That I don't follow. It's not what you want out of life. You worked, you sacrificed, you gave up everything, and then when you arrived at the top, you discovered that it wasn't where you wanted to be because you were there all by yourself. Oh, no, you should write the advice to the lovelorn. Why not? I was once as lovelorn as you are. Long ago, in another life. That's, that's why I came here. That's why we all come here. It's a place where we may help each other to discard all of our false illusions and excess baggage. Just tell me one thing. When does the money change hands? Money? <laughs> oh, poor Sheila. You've been abused by the world you still cling to. And you won't let go. You're arriving early. Now who are you talking to? The ship. Joy to you. We are ready to receive. Oh, now what? Come, join us. The entire community will go out to welcome the ship. Hurry. Serene, it's your ship. Yes, from my home. It's filled with the most wonderful people. Friends. Friends. As you know, as you feel, as you see, the ship is coming. Let us all join hands. Let us all sing to her silently and welcome her down. Here she comes. The ship. Here she comes. B. 
Reporters have always interviewed people who claim to have seen UFOs. But now we have a reporter who is about to become witness. And so the authenticity of her account should be beyond question. But reporters, after all, are also human and subject to the frailties that may beset the rest of us. We shall see about this spaceship, or alleged spaceship, in Act Three shortly. Margaret Fuller, perhaps the first great feminist, looked up at the sky one night and exclaimed, I accept the universe. When Thomas Carlyle was told of her remark, he said, By George, she'd better. The truth is all of us must accept the universe. But how many of us, in fact, do any of us, know what the universe really is? Is it cold, barren space illuminated by twinkling stars? Or does it teem with life? Will we ever know? Let us all join hands and sing down the ship. There it is. Where? I don't see it. Welcome and joy to you. Our hearts reach out and touch. May the harmony of your planet blend with the melody of ours. May the forces of peace and love Combine. It's a new one, a bigger one. Where is it? Blessings multiply, our friendship grows deeper, richer. The ship, it's about to touch down. Where? Can't you hear it? No. Don't you see it? It's down. I don't hear it and I don't see it. Welcome, Captain. Welcome, crew. Welcome, all passengers. They'll be disembarking in just a minute. Who will be disembarking? From where? Perfect landing, Captain. Perfect, as usual. Bard, what are you trying to do here? Beautiful ship business. Okay. Would you like to go aboard? Sure. Show me where. You don't see it? <laughs> that is what I keep trying to tell you. Well, then, obviously, you can't go aboard her. I... Do... Do you expect me to believe that you actually think there's a spaceship or, or a flying saucer or whatever and that it has just landed here? Bard, come. I want you to meet my brother. What sort of a charade are you playing with me? Sheila, you don't see the ship. I think we've already established you that. You don't see it because you don't believe it's there. Oh, it's my fault. The ship just doesn't fly in. Uh-huh. We, each of us, create it. We create it because we need it. We want it so badly, we have to have it. Are you admitting it's an illusion? Well, of course. Ah. The ship, all these things we try to bring into our lives, they're all abstract ideas. No kidding. All life is the struggle to convert abstract ideas into reality, isn't it? And so we've taken the abstract idea of the spaceship, of a universe teeming with life. And we've managed to transform it into reality. And no one can prove you wrong. But everyone who wants to can prove us right. Is that a fact? If you look within you, deep inside, you'll see what you really want. Then you will see it here at Universe Hollow. Okay. And now, if you'll excuse me, there are people I must say hello to. Mm, say hello for me, too. I spent a week in Universe Hollow. I know no more now the day I'm about to leave than I did on the day I arrived. Are they receiving secret support? Possibly. But from whom? Is this the beginning of some new political movement? Possibly. Is this a setup for a monumental sting or scam? Possibly. Huh. The possibilities are infinite. Because the universe itself is infinite. All I know is I was there. I didn't see the spaceship. Period. I saw the spaceship, Sheila. Lewis, what do you want now? I saw it. I saw it much too late to do me any good, but it is not too late for you. What's not too late? Go on board the ship. 
save yourself. No, thank you. He's handsome, Miss Barnes. Not as handsome as I was. He's crazy. No, no, you're the one who's crazy. You have a chance with him. Why would I want him? You're probably in love with him already. What if I am? <gasps> I'm always falling in love. But it means nothing. Because the man I fall in love with hardly knows I exist. Unless he wants to use me the way you did. He's your last chance, Sheila. Don't say that. Back in the rat race, you wouldn't have time. When will you ever have the chance to develop a deep, lasting relationship? Oh, take him, Sheila. And live out here, in the boondocks. Travel through space. Uh, no, thank you. I'll stay where I am. I won't ever see you again. I know. I'm reconciled to the way life is going to be. The way it has to be. And about your article? Yes? It drips with sarcasm. Good. I'm back in form. It's drenched with cynicism. It's supposed to be. It's patronizing and destructive. Great. So it will be very successful. Thank you, Lewis. Goodbye, Sheila. I think we're quits. Finally. I'm sorry you're leaving. Well, it's been fun, Bard. I was hoping you might stay. Why? We need people. And besides... Yes? For all this, it... It isn't for you. No, no, no. All this, uh... Well, whatever it is, it's, it's not quite my cup of tea. Do you know how your cup of tea is really flavored, Sheila? Yes. With the taste of big cities. With the smell of the centers of power. I have to be in the middle of that. Well, then, I hope you find happiness there. I don't see how I can. I never did before. Then why are you going back? Because it's the only life I really know. It's never too late to know a new one. Oh, yes, it is. You never know until you try. I did try. I tried to see that spaceship. I tried as hard as I could. I just couldn't make it land. Serene went down the road to a telephone. And your taxi will be here any minute now. Goodbye, Sheila. Goodbye, Bard. Well, now, we going to get to read that there article, Miss Rogan? <laughs> yes, it'll be syndicated throughout the country, Tex. Hmm. Uh, what did you think of them folks back there in the holler, huh? Well, you said it all the night you picked me up. It's a nest of crazies. Yeah, I admit I may have said that, but... Uh, but, uh... Well, now, you know, this is real crazy, but I think so. sometimes that I hear them spaceships landing. Really? Yes, ma'am. And there are times when I could swear I see the bright red glow of the engines. Mm, are you sure you're not sampling some more of that home brew you've been serving up to the needy? Well, all I can say is, if this keeps up, I may end up becoming one of the needy myself. Come in, Sheila. Sit down. Okay, Jesse. Give me the verdict. It's absolutely sensational. Ah. <sighs> In all the years I've been your agent, I never thought you could write like this. It's good, huh? It will make the whole world forget the Pulitzer Prize fiasco. Sheila, this piece brings you all the way back home. It's going to be the biggest thing that ever happened. What? We'll make it a book. A book? Why not? On the strength of this, I can go to any publisher, and I can go to any motion picture company. What? It's a movie, my dear. Do you know who could play Bob? Oh, no, wait, wait. I, I can mean... get us in advance of a million, maybe more. You just leave it all to me. Sure. What did I tell you 20 years ago? I told you we'd strike it rich one day. <gasps> oh, what's that? What's what? Oh, you don't hear anything? No, what am I supposed to hear? Sheila, are you all right? I hear it. Oh, I hear it. Will you sing the ship down, Sheila? Yes. Oh, yes. I hear it. I hear them. Sheila, don't scare me like this. The ship is arriving now. Who are you talking to? Joy to you? Joy to whom? The people on the ship. What ship? Sheila, stop it. Sit down. I have to leave. Where are you going? To the ship. W where? Where is it, this ship? It's coming down. 
in Universe Hollow. I I'd better take this, the article. No, leave that here. I have to have copies made. No, dear Jesse. I don't want a thing like this ever to be published. Let me pour you a drink. It's a new world, Jesse. A whole new, wonderful world. Oh, it's filled with endless possibilities. It's light. It's bright. It's overflowing with love. And I'm part of it. The ship. I can see it coming down. I bet you can. Welcome and joy to you. May the harmony of your planet blend with the melody of ours. May all the forces of peace and love and light combine. Sheila, Sheila, think of what you're doing. You're throwing away a multi-million dollar package. Set your course bearing for love, for peace, for joy. My course is set, Sheila. Our course is set. Jesse, I'm going back there. Where? To Universe Hollow, to the Bard, to another world. Are you crazy? Today. Today is the first sane day of my life. Set your bearing for love, Bard. For love and peace and joy. And I assumed that they did. Now, you can look at this story in an infinite number of ways. But let's consider two of them. First, it happened just the way we told it. She was able to summon those powers, whatever they are, and actually see, hear, and become a part of the spaceship, or whatever it was. Second, she has this habit of falling in love with the men she interviews, and Bard was the next on the list. So you take the interpretation that captures your fancy and wait just for a little while for me to return. What's there in the endless reaches of space? What awaits us when our own ship shall finally venture toward the newest frontiers? Or we might also ask, what ships are reaching toward our own? Shall we call it turf? One can only hope that they shall arrive bearing peace and light and love. We certainly could use all we can get of those. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Arnold Moss, Earl Hammond, and Joyce Gordon. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Tammy Grimes, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.